This is almost uh, the end of this last uh, plenary session of the conference uh, itself. So let me welcome uh, to the stage now for the final uh, closing remarks of the conference. First of all, Vitenis Andriukaitis, EU Commissioner for Health and Food Safety. Uh, please take a seat at the lecture. And also, if I could welcome to the stage Sue Davis and Bernard Earle, Chair of EFSA's Management Board and, of course, EFSA's Executive Director. So, welcome. And, uh, and uh, if you would like to give your speech straight away, I think, uh, at the lectern or wherever you want to. Si. Si. I would like to say, ladies and gentlemen, but first of all, I would like to say, like-minded friends, because of simple reason, <clears throat> when we use the food, we must feel us well, because of food safety is in the hands of EFSA. And we all are like-minded, because we are need in very well-prepared risk, risk uh, assessment, and of course, a guarantee that the European Union is it's a place where food safety standards are very, very high. And this, of course, belongs on, on activity of, of EFSA. Okay. Uh, I understand that you have had a busy schedule over the past three days. Unfortunately, I was unable to attend all the meetings, but I am impressed by the number and the scope of topics you have discussed. They are indeed very relevant to the European Commission priorities in the area of food safety. Following my appointment as a Commissioner for Health and Food Safety last November, I have received a mission letter from President Jean-Claude Juncker. In his letter, he outlined some key tasks, which include, first, modernization and or simplification of the existing legislation, in line with our better regulation principles. Second, support the European Union's capacity to deal with crisis situations in food safety. And third, review the existing decision-making process applied to genetically modified organisms. In this mission letter, President Juncker recognized that the European Union has a well-developed food safety policy with a rather complete and mature legal framework. Indeed. We enjoy what can certainly be defined the highest levels in the world for food and feed safety, animal health, and plant health. These are bringing very important public health and economic benefits for, for the European Union and make up an important element for the reputation of our food products around the world. We cannot, however, take this favorable situation for granted as certain risks are already present while others are constantly emerging. Emerging risks arise from a wide range of sources, including the globalization of trade, climate change, antimicrobial resistance, new and emerging foodborne diseases, animal and plant diseases, fraud, and poor nutrition. As you know, uh, all Europeans are very worried about food safety. I saw in my eyes last Saturday, huge demonstration in Berlin when people raised one slogan, we are ready to fight European food safety standards. Of course, I saw how many allies we all have, and those allies are also EFSA allies. But then they have second slogan. We are against GMO, and third, we are against TTIP. Because of, we are ready to defend our high food safety standards, but we think that GMOs are something against food safety standards, and especially TTIP, it will be diminished our food safety standards. And when I started to explain, explain that, sorry, TTIP is not about food safety standards. And if you are ready to discuss GMOs, we must all discuss scientific approach related to GMOs. And in this case, we have EFSA 
which only one body which is ready to say about GM crops, their safety or not. And you must believe on EFSA and trust on EFSA. Today is very important because all, uh, when you see how many members in the European Parliament are ready to attack EFSA, saying that, you know, they are under pressure of industry. I am disagree. You must be very honest. Traceability, of course, credibility, of course, trust, it's in our hands. And we must be very precise to speaking that EFSA is the highest stop in the risk assessment, and EFSA is the highest stop not only at European Union level, but around the world. Of course, my job doesn't consist of uh, resting on our laurels. The situation could quickly deteriorate and up undermined without continued investment and work to uphold our high standards. This is why I would like to thank EFSA for focusing on the future of risk assessments today. It will help us to guarantee high food safety standards and hence the future of the European economic leadership in the area of food. And today, as you know, there is World Food Day, and it's very important to say about that. As a European Commissioner, I am fully aware that there are many challenges which lie ahead of us, but I also know that I can rely on the crucial expertise of EFSA. For example, currently we are facing the outbreak of Xylella fastidiosa here in Italy, a plant pathogenic bacterium which was detected in olive trees in Lecce province in Apulia, Italy in October 2013. And it is extremely helpful to be able to rely, rely on EFSA's urgent advice in order to respond to these types of emerging situations. Xylella illustrates very well the need to anticipate and plan for possible outbreaks of, of new diseases in the European Union. Discussing the future of the risk assessment in Europe means also discussing how we prepare ourselves to address these new issues, both in terms of scientific assessment and in terms of risk management. I recognize that in these months, I have always found in EFSA an incredible ability to provide timely scientific advice. On all the issues raised in the context of my mandate, also when they are unexpected or completely new, it is important to stress that this precious scientific advice is a result of the work of hundreds of, of dedicated scientists from across the member state who are working together. To them, I say thank for you serving this great European cause. I appreciate that this can be difficult to justify nationally, especially during times of constrained resources available. But without these people, food safety in Europe would be in danger. These risk assessors are the ultimate source of the EFSA's reputation as one of the best food risk assessment agencies in the world. I hope we will be able to ensure and secure many more generations of experts in risk assessment. And they know that EFSA is very active on this issue, but I also count on the member states to continue supporting this model and to redouble their efforts in recruiting and training the next generation of risk assessors so that we have the necessary expertise for the good of European food safety. I would also like to take this opportunity to recognize EFSA's success in networking with organizations involved in similar work, both nationally and at EU level. I see this as work in progress and in, in encourage EFSA to boost its efforts in this regard. I invite those of you here today who are responsible for other organizations to do likewise. I think the potential benefits from such cooperation extend beyond just efficient use of scarce resources to the benefit of synergies and multidisciplinarity. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, having said that, let me now move on to 
what I consider to be, be, be some of the most important challenges for the future in the area of food. The first issue, as already mentioned, is certainly linked to the new emerging risks, be them in the field of animal health, plant health, Xylella, good example, or human health. In this, the expertise of EFSA will be more than ever crucial because as we will be called to take quick and sometimes difficult decisions, and we can do so only with the help of science. Another particularly sensitive issue where EFSA advice has always been indispensable is the area of new technologies. I know that it is not easy to communicate the science to the larger general audiences and to prize the benefits of some technologies, especially in food area. The subject of genetically modified crops has certainly been one of the more difficult areas I have had a deal with since taking up my duties as a European commissioner. <clears throat> GMOs still strike fear in the hearts of many European Union citizens, despite the fact that science says them to be safe. Moreover, biotechnologies could present various positive characteristics, such as resistance to drop, higher yields, less pesticides, all of which will contribute to feeding an increasing world population. While addressing new technologies, I would like to take this opportunity to refer to the new European Union novel food legislation that will hopefully be agreed between the, in the Council and Parliament before the end of this month. <clears throat> this regulation will ensure stringent safety measures while opening new opportunities for food producers, including small and medium enterprises, and provide consumers with an increasing range of new, safe, and interesting foods. Once again, EFSA will be called, called on to play its very important part when it comes to risk assessments. As commissioner responsible for health and food safety, I am naturally very keen to promote the link between healthier, accessible food and healthier lives. Better health of citizens results in a higher productivity, lower, lower level of absenteeism from work, lower levels of obesity, and other beneficial aspects, which all leads to a stronger economy. A recent WHO report drew attention once again to the increasing levels of obesity in the European Union up to 60% of the population in certain member states being either overweight or, or obese. This worrying trend has serious implications for the prevalence of diseases including diabetes, circular diseases, and certain cancers which will have serious implications for the sustainability of our health systems and health services, as well as provoking misery of individuals and families. As a former heart, heart surgeon, I am very conscious of the dangers uh, as associated with trans fatty acids, and my services are currently finalizing a report on trans fats, as the legislators requested under the regulation on food information to consumers. Reducing high index of trans fatty acids in some population group and individuals in the EU is one of the means of tackling chronic diseases associated with poor diet and I therefore consider to be a strong priority. Finally, I cannot let an occasion such as this pass without expressing my deep concern about the issues of antimicrobial resistance which has a foothold in both areas of my portfolio, health and food safety. Animal and food production systems have an important role to play in, in reducing the threats arising from IMR. I am enthusiastic about our One Health approach and policy. That public and animal health strategies work in, hand in hand to ensure that both play their part in ensuring high levels of protection. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for this opportunity to outline some of the challenges that we are facing and where EFSA advice will certainly be important. To conclude, let me say that it is encouraging to see that contributions to this conference are not confined, con confined to the European Union or even Europe, but rather have a global input. 
This is as it should be. Increasingly, the problems we face are of a global nature, and we must resolve them together. Thank you very much indeed for your attention.